Welcome back to Read Only Memories. Let's check around Hayden's apartment for any evidence we can use to try to find who took him and maybe where or why. Hayden likes the natural light that this apartment affords. This window here is where I escaped from. It is a considerable distance to the ground below. Hmm. How, how did you do it then? Did, did Turing just fall? Yeah, how did you get down? I took the fire escape. <laughs> well, there you go. Of course you did. It's a long way down. Better keep careful on the balcony. Photos. Pictures of Hayden traveling all over the world. Working at a company like Parallax ensures we'll be more than well off. The sentiment is understood, but you probably won't forget what Hayden looks like anytime soon. This plant is doing much better than the one at home. Rom parts, ooh. More rom components. The only things ever seen cluttering Hayden's place. Should I grab them? What reason would you have for taking this? You don't even own a ROM. True, but this is an adventure game and I kind of want to take everything that isn't nailed down. And if it is nailed down, I want to use a hammer to unnail it and then take it. I think I see something under those reference books. Hmm? What's that? Tablet. Ah, Hayden's tablet. I find it rather annoying that he prefers to go basic rather than entrust me with his schedule. It is well within my skill set. And he claims he does not want me to begin to feel subservient to him. It looks like there's a place here for a physical memory card. So let's see if I can find a memory card somewhere. That's Hayden's computer. Most people just use a hand screen or goggles in conjunction with their ROM, but desktop rigs like this are still more suitable to the intensive programming tasks Hayden needed to perform. Do you know the password to get in? There might be clues. Unfortunately, no, I don't. And before you ask, I don't think I'd be able to break past its security in any reasonable length of time. Hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, I know that Turing hacked my door, but my door was a terrible, terrible, terrible piece of... security? If you can even call it that. But uh, I'm sure Hayden is a bit more conscientious of security. So it's probably a lot harder to crack his. Of course you can't. That would be too easy. <sighs> I'm sorry to disappoint you. If you'd like to try your hand at digital breaking and entering, be my guest. I actually have a bit less free processing power than a regular ROM, despite my fantastically more capable CPU. Much of those extra clock cycles are used to maintain my complex personality algorithms. Hayden's computer has enough spare processing power to run counter-intrusion software if I attempt to slice in. Frankly, even if I did have the power capability, I haven't found hacking to be one of my talents. Talent? The whole reason humans have always been better at breaking into systems than the systems are at keeping them out is because humans have intuition. While computers can only think in straight lines, humans can think sideways and upside down. I lack that type of human creativity. Are you incapable of that kind of creative leap? Well, I wouldn't say that, but as silly as it sounds, I just don't think I'm very good with computers. I do seem to have some skill with painting, though. 
Aiden was impressed with some of my pieces. But I'm not sure he has a firm enough grasp of early 20th century abstract expressionism to give me an objective opinion. Really, you're good at abstract 20th century expressionist paintings. Abstract art doesn't seem like something a robot would be good at. That's true. Machines are best at reproduction. Still life, impressionism, photorealism. But I find it more challenging and satisfying to paint what I feel. Hmm. Let's get back to searching. So I can actually try to use the password. You have no idea how to log in. Okay, so I can't just, like, free type the password. I guess I've got to find something that tells me what it probably is going to be and then use that on it. Well, I'm thinking if I pour the spoiled milk on the keyboard, I might short it out. You're just hell-bent on destruction today, aren't you? Yeah, kinda. I'm thinking if I hear the beats of his pewter, it might give me the password. The hum of the standby screen has no melody. Dang. I thought those headphones were supposed to be intelligent. Come on, headphones of the future can't break into somebody's computer? Lame. The television is looping through some of Hayden's feeds. Tech banter, Ted's code tips, augmented eye. There are no buttons on the screen, and there's no need to watch TV right now. Oh, these are a bunch of game consoles. A few vintage video game consoles. Hayden was always a fan of old tech. There's a Mega 16, a Dural, and even a Famalink. Oh, this one's broken. A ROM component and Hayden's headset. He must have been in the middle of working on something. Oh, there's a memory card. Well, I know where to put that thing, in the tablet. Busted. He must have dropped it in the skirmish. Okay, I think that's everything. Yep, alright, let's put the memory card in. Hayden must have taken out the memory card, in order to prevent his assailants from easily tracing his connections. If only he had kept his information stored with me, he would not have had to resort to such crude measures. The tablet's calendar says he was supposed to meet with someone named Tomcat today. Ring any... digital bells? Not really. I guess we'll have to go ask. It says here they were going to meet at a club called Stardust in the Castro. I'll mark it on your city map for you. We can head over there and ask around about this Tomcat character. My city map? Oh, excuse me. I still haven't set up a user account for you in my system. We shouldn't put that off any longer. Once finished, I will have an assortment of new ways to assist you. For example, I'll be able to reroute any call or message that you receive while we're out and about. There are many other systems and applications you will be able to utilize in addition to these. This is an exciting thing, I promise. I just need to ask you a few questions. Don't you know literally everything about me already? You knew my first dog's birthday, for heaven's sake. This is just how things are done. I'm certain that I could spend a few quadrillion clock cycles to bypass that part of my operating system, but that seems less efficient than just running the setup program. So, here we go. <laughs> the face. <laughs> Welcome to the first time user setup for your new relationship at Organizational Manager. Running the latest build of the Parallax Live Intelligence Processing System. Alright, <laughs> so it's gone into full-on, like, original manufacturer mode. 
I'll need to ask you a few questions, and then you can get right to managing your life with your new ROM. If you have any questions, feel free to consult our online FAQ and setup guide, or contact our support department directly. First, could you tell me your preferred name for use in account creation, online communications, and conversational speech? Oh! I actually get to type it in. Okay. I'm usually really, 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 really bad at coming up with names in games. Occasionally, I have come to a screen where I have to input a name and I say, all right, hold on, I'm gonna cut here and I'll be back when I think of one. And it takes me like 10 or 20 minutes. <laughs> so to avoid that, um, I'm gonna call myself... That's misspelled. That's also misspelled. Nelavanda. There we go. <gasps> ten of ten. Just hit the just hit the limit. There we go. Nelavanda. It's a pretty cool name. I like it. It's named after a character from an adventure game, and I forgot the name of the freaking adventure game. But the character's full name was Nuri Dari Nelavanda. Which is a little bit of a mouthful, so I just clipped it off to Nelavanda. Thank you. I've input your name as Nelavanda. Next, could you tell me which pronouns I should use for you in referential and conversational speech? Let's see. That's awesome that you actually get to choose your own name and how you want to be referred to as. That's really cool. I'm curious what the more options are. You could even make a custom pronoun. That's cool. Uh, let's go with... she. Thank you. I've input your pronouns as she, her, her, hers. Finally, could you tell me your preferred diet for use in restaurant recommendations? Hmm. This is so cool. Omnivorous. That's how everybody says it, right? Vegetarian, vegan. What are the other ones? Kosher, gluten-free. God damn it, Turing. I don't know what that diet is. Um... Let's go with vegetarian. Since I am actually a vegetarian. Diet set as vegetarian. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Thank you, Nilabanda. I have obtained your physical location from GPS and will load local data into my memory as it becomes available. Please review your submitted profile information for accuracy or restart setup to enter it again. In review, your name is Nelavanda. Your pronouns are she, her, and your diet is vegetarian. Does that sound right? Mm-hmm. Thank you, Nelavanda. See, Nelavanda? That was relatively painless. You should now be able to access the local map of NeoSF. The meeting with Tomcat isn't until later this evening. Perhaps we should head back to your apartment for now. Alright, I'm ready to go. I'm sure we can find some common good in getting to know one another better. We should have no problem passing the time efficiently. I would like to know you better, Turing. Thank you for escorting me here. Let's head back to your home. So we've just left the prologue. You know, your Chrysula Ovata isn't doing very well in Elevanda. For a second I was gonna say what, and then I realized, oh, that's gotta be the plant. Unless perhaps that's the scientific name of the beastly monster that is growing out of my drain. <laughs> Have you been overwatering it? Um, yes. Too much water. That is the problem. Actually, 
Hey, I just happened to dump my old stale coffee on it. Don't plants need lots of water? It's actually a succulent. And since I'm assuming you leave this window open all the time, it should get more than enough water just from the occasional rain blowing in. Speaking of the rain, your decorative plant may be doing poorly, but the mildew in your drywall is flourishing. Hey, at least some sort of life is growing. Even if it's not the good kind. Mildew. Time to give the landlord another call. I have, in fact, already taken the liberty of sending a request to his office. But, considering the broken window, broken sink, and the lingering sense of disrepair, I'm not confident that he has a history of following through. I would suggest confronting him in person, but I've run a net search, and the man is a convicted felon for assault and battery with a deadly weapon. Perhaps we should bring some sort of a bribe. I will continue to formulate a stratagem. Great! My landlord might murder, murder me. That's Wilty. I got it from a friend a couple months ago. How thoughtful of them. The Crisula ovata, also known as the jade plant, money tree, Lucky tree, or friendship tree, is an excellent and an easy to care for houseplant. They make beautiful bonsai, are suitable for beginners, and have some cultural significance both in the Far East and America as a token for good financial luck. Most likely an urban legend, but still a nice gift. Okay, so uh, what do you want me to do about the plant? I'd like your authorization to have a few tools shipped here. If I replant it into a more suitable pot with sandier soil, it should be thriving again soon. You just have to remember to water it less frequently. Considering the state of your apartment, I'd have figured you'd neglect it rather than drown it. Ironic, since it would be doing better if you had. Sure, Turing, whatever you want. Excellent. The supply should be here soon. I ordered from a place close by to keep the shipping costs down. Oh, one other thing, Nelavenda. When I was doing the research on how to best take care of the Crisula ovata, I stumbled upon the persistent belief that talking to plants improves their health. There is scientific evidence that shows there may be something to the notion, but the methodology in the studies was a bit shaky so it all could be rank superstition. Anyway, I'll have this plant flourishing in no time. If left in direct sunlight, the leaves gain a pretty red tinge to their edges, and it should start flowering in the autumn. It'll really pull the whole room together. Um, I don't think it will. I don't think there's anything to pull together. But, okay. You know, once we get the sink fixed... Oh! It's almost the time Hayden had scheduled to meet with Tomcat. We should make our way to Stardust soon. Your city map is updated with the location. Okay, well before we go, we of course have to talk to the plant, right? Oh, I could be an asshole to it. I can call it ugly. Hey, you wilty. Nice leaves. With more of that, We'll surely be on the way to lush greenery in no time. This action will have consequences. <laughs> what is this, The Walking Dead? <laughs> Clementine will remember that. I'm trying to think, is there any point in saving the game for, like, safety? I mean, is it possible to die? I really, really doubt it. No, I don't think it's that sort of a game. I guess I'll save anyway, though. Doesn't hurt, right? Just in case the game crashes or something. Alright, let's go. Ready to head out? Mm-hmm. Let's go.
Okay, so how many how many places do I have access to right now? Stardust Club, Hayden's apartment, and home. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Ready to go again. <coughs> Awkward. Looks like the place. Assuming the flashing neon signs are telling the truth. From the sounds of the music, things are already underway at Stardust. Hopefully you can find Tomcat inside. And some answers. Look at how futuristic the cars are. It's gonna be hard talking with Tomcat inside, the loud music. A 2060 Z... Is that ZS? I think, yeah. ZS Coupe. Perfect for letting everyone know you spent a fortune of credits on a car. <laughs> Can I talk to the... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can I pour spoiled milk on the car? You approach the car with the intent to pour your spoiled milk on the windshield, but the Coupe's wipers are already alerted and stand primed at the ready, daring you to try. <laughs> Damn futuristic cars. In my day, we used to pour spoiled milk on everybody's cars. They've really gotten into the holiday spirit. Well, look at these little, like, bubble plants. These planters are completely self-contained. You tap on the glass. The plant doesn't seem to notice. The bouncer for Stardust seems almost pensive as he watches the street, pausing every now and then to take a drag from his vaporizer. I'm sorry, calling it a vaporizer just makes me think that it can not only be used for smoking, but also for turning people into dust. Set vaporizer to stun. It's open. The sign is on 24-7. Okay, well, we should probably talk to the bouncer to make sure we can get in, right? Welcome to Stardust. I guess we can go in. Okay. Hold up there. You got ID? Mm-hmm. Small plastic ID card with your name, picture, and stats. Oh, right. You don't use items that way. You use them like this. All right. Looks good to me. Excuse me, sir. Would you like some spoiled milk? That's disgusting. Alright, fair enough. Goodbye. Welcome to Stardust. This is the place. Have you ever been here before, Nelavanda? Who could stand the music? What? This music's... fine. I was gonna say it's great, but that's not quite true. I don't love it, but it's, it's okay. It's okay, it's fine, it's fine. Nope, not my kind of place. It does seem to be a bit boisterous for your tastes, at least from what I know of them. Still, the noise in the crowd should help keep our investigation clandestine. Anyway, where do you think we should start? Hmm, let's check the bar. Good idea. Maybe the bartender can tell us where to find Tomcat. Oh my god, you can look at everything. All the posters. Well, almost all of them. Not this one. Red World, an indie flick premiering in the Castro Theater. Zazen. A poster for the band Zazen, one of the more popular live acts here in the city. Scrap Brain, a new single by Zazen, sponsored by Arena Box. It's a poster ad for the new art exhibit at New Drive in the Fillmore District. Fire for Zone 3, a new arcade about to open in Japantown. <laughs> Random glass of whiskey. 
Can I drink the random glass of whiskey? Randomly? It's a shot of whiskey. It's not yours. I'm not even going to try to drink it. I don't want to drink it anyway. Vegetarians don't drink whiskey. A gruff looking man holds down the bar. He seems friendly enough, given his size. Reaching over the bar like that comes off pretty threatening. Yeah, I did just try to use him. I don't know why I did that. That's kind of weird. Uh, let's talk to the person instead of trying to touch him. Hey, friend. What can I do for you? I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. Mm, sure, but first, let's get you a drink. What'll it be? Well, I'm not gonna drink. Don't want to drink. <laughs> Wait, is fucking IDK, is that actually a drink or is that just... I fucking, I don't know. Look at these names, what even are these? Sober Shafur, whatever, Bionic Femme, Modest Connie, what a... <laughs> They're so creative with their alcohol names. You kids in your create creative alcohol. Air drink, is that even liquid? Or is that, or is that just air? Please just give me some water. Oh my god. Green tea! You know what, that sounds lovely. So many drinks these days. Remind me, what's in that? Drinktionary. The free and open alcoholpedia says, Non-alcoholic. Just green tea because it's that good. Huh. Alright, you got it. Coming right up. Hey, that doesn't look green, it looks yellow. Now, what is it you need to know? Um, let's get to know this guy more. Could you tell me more about yourself? Oh. <laughs> I should introduce myself. The name is Majid. God, I hope I pronounced your name right. I'm sorry, Majid, if I didn't. Well, hell, if it's not Majid, what is it? Majid? <laughs> no way, it's gotta be Majid. I've been manning the bar at Stardust for longer than I'd like to admit. And owned it a, owned it a bit longer than that. Don't places like this come and go in a flash? That's true. And it was true about the Stardust. The first six months were great. But after that, interest dried up and the kids moved on to the next big thing. But... I suppose I'm just a stubborn guy and kept throwing good money after bad. <laughs> after two years, things started to pick back up again. We got some regulars around, they started bringing in enough new folks, and it reached critical mass pretty quick. What'd you do before Stardust? I mostly got myself into trouble. When I immigrated from, or not immigrated, when I emigrated from Pakistan, I didn't have a whole lot of employable skills. But I'm real big and know how to crack skulls, so that's what I did. In the end, I guess I wasn't cut out for that line of work. And after one close shave too many, I got out. I had enough cash saved up to buy this place, which was a hole at the time. The rest is history. <laughs> I'm sure it sounds more exciting than it was. Could ask about Hayden. Yeah. Uh, probably won't know him, but it doesn't hurt. We're looking for Hayden, a friend who's gone missing. Do you know him? Hayden. Older guy, does some kind of computer work at Parallax? Oh, he does know him. I think I know who you're talking about. Don't know a thing about him being missing, though. He comes in here every couple of weeks, hangs out at the bar, and chats with people. Typical stuff. Doesn't really seem like a scene, but I think he comes in to scout young programming talent. 
I can ask around, find out if anyone has seen him lately. I'll let you know. I'm meeting a, meeting a Tomcat. Do you know where they are? I'm pretty sure I saw a Tomcat coming earlier, but I don't know where they went off to. I'd ask what you were meeting about, but I know they like to keep that kind of stuff quiet. Maybe try looking out on the dance floor? If I come around over here, I'll tell them someone's looking. Well, it was nice meeting you, but I gotta get back to work. I'll keep an eye out for Tomcat and send them your way if I see them. Good luck. That's a nice person. Uh, so did you actually give me my green tea as an item? Oh cool, there it is. A nice refreshing green tea. Can I drink it? I can. Let's just stare at it. Let's just admire the green tea. Non-alcoholic. Just green tea because it's that good. Let's drink it. That hit the spot. You drank your drink. Drink you drank. Can I get another one? I was gonna touch him again. For some reason I want to use people to talk to them. I don't know, it's... I'm not trying to, like, feel them up or something. But for some reason it just seems like the right thing to do, right? It's, I guess it's kind of like from playing other games where you press E to use stuff, and you use a, a person to talk to them. It's hard to get out of that habit. It's like, I'm sorry, Majid, I'm just trying to press E on you. What are you having? Oh cool, we can have more. Tokyo tea. Wait, ingredients and ratios, what is this? So many drinks these days. Remind me, what's in that? Uh, what? Two parts white rum, three parts- What? I thought- That's actually a drink? Drinks and ratios or whatever that was called? That's actually a drink? I thought that was like a dialogue option. What the hell kind of a name is that for a drink? No, I don't want it. Uh. Ingredients and ratios. How is that the name of an alcoholic drink? I'm not gonna drink that. Can I... Can I throw it away? Oh, I tried to use you again. I'm sorry. God, how much am I, Like, aren't I poor? How much am I paying for these drinks? Let's see. <laughs> Sickly Sky? <laughs> what, is that alcohol mixed with vomit? Ew, that actually... Oh, no, I shouldn't have said that. I'm just... Oh, no. No, don't think about that. Mm hmm. Let's see if they have anything other than green tea that's non-alcoholic. I'm curious. Mo Sugar Rush. How many do they have here? My god. Uh, Tokyo Tea, it could be. It might just be a tea. Or that might just be the name of another alcoholic drink. Let's see. Uh, melon liquor with vodka, rum, tequila, gin. Oh my god! I just wanted tea! I just... Ugh. Alright. Well, I have a lot of alcoholic drinks. I hope I can use them as a bribe. Maybe for my landlord or something. Goodbye. What's going on, people? Rad Dancer. They are pretty rad. Ooh. Would that person be... Well, they look kind of cat-like, so I'm guessing they're Tomcat. But they've obviously had modifications. So what would they be? A hybrid? Would that be a hybrid? I guess we'll probably learn more about that soon. They're really into dancing right now. They look really hyped. Yeah, stare at that table. These fancy tables have little touchscreens where you can order drinks from the bar and browse the mesh. The party never stops at Stardust. Open 24 hours a day. A woman stands at a drink table. Quietly people watching. Don't touch, don't touch, talk, don't touch. E yes, what do you want? Hello, I'm looking for a person named Tomcat. What the hell? 
we head right up to the chick with the ears, because of course she'd have the cat name. I get it. Unfreaking believable. Well, yeah. Tomcat? Cat ears? Come on. You can't blame me for thinking that. Don't get your fur in a knot. <laughs> what? I don't know if that's playful or just being a dick. Sorry, you're just the only person standing here. <laughs> nice save, jerk. Listen, I'm cruising for cuties, and I don't appreciate you blocking the view. I don't know where Tomcat is, so shove off. Eh, I think they're Tomcat. Okay, let them know I'm looking for them if you see them. Yeah, alright, whatever. Just get moving. I'm pretty sure they're Tomcat. Oh, you're actually Tomcat. But the, the, she, she has ears. She has to be Tomcat. You have hurt my assumption. And now I'm offended. No, it's fine. Hey there, I heard you were looking for me. What can I do for you? Are you Tomcat? The one and only. Although, I'd prefer if you keep it a little quieter than you have been. I do my share of moseying on both sides of the law, if you know what I mean. Is that why that woman was giving me such a hard time? Nah, Jess is just a bit of a prickly bear. She'd probably give hell to just about anyone who wandered up and started bothering her with something. I don't matter what. To what do I owe the pleasure of our meeting here? Uh, a friend of mine, Hayden, has gone missing. We found a note saying he was going to meet you. Hayden is missing? Well, that's sour news indeed. I see you got his little ROM with you, so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt for now. You know about me? And my creation? Hayden never mentioned your involvement to me. Sure thing, huh? I helped reprogram the backend on your OS so that the AI code Hayden wrote for you would interface properly with the network. I have a distressing lack of information on my own creation. Hayden never saw fit to inform me on what went into designing my programming. Is there anything else you can tell me? Not much more on that end. I didn't have much to do with your core AI routines, so I can't really elaborate. Sorry, dear. Anything else I can help with? Tell us about yourself. Sure. You may have even heard of me in the news. About ten years ago, I hacked into Parallax's main ROM servers. Caused one hell of a stink, if I do say so myself. People were arguing back and forth whether I was whether I was kid genius or a malicious criminal. Earned myself an enforced net blackout for a few years, but I think it was worth it for the prestige. So, which was it? Kid genius or malicious criminal? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't really do it to steal anything, but I had to break an awful lot of eggs to crack my way in. I chalk it up to the exuberance of youth. Now I try to stay on the straight and narrow. Mostly. Sometimes. Why hack into Parallax? Guess I did it to see if I could. I mean, Parallax is a mighty big target. Bigger than the government in many ways. With as many ROMs as they have on the market, they need some of the toughest darn security in the world. This question's, some of these questions are kind of rude. Like, what's the deal with the accent? Are you from the South? Like, that sounds really judgmental. No, dear. I'm California born and raised. 
I read a lot of books during my mandated blackout. I just happened to get into novels about down south. I like to imagine myself as a southern belle. Or maybe I'd just like having three walk-in closets full of clothes. <laughs> That'd be nice. How'd you know Hayden? Hayden and I met not long after my blackout ran out, when he tapped me for my experience in cracking the Lips OS. It puzzled me at the time, since he's very sharp himself. I think he just wanted someone to work on it, off the books. He ain't the most straightforward man. My computer runs on Lips OS. I didn't know ROMs did, too. The Live Intelligence Processing System is the primary operating system old Parallax computers used to run on, but the company has since expanded it to make it especially useful for their ROMs. It's real heavy on learning algorithms, so it can tailor itself to each user's habits. And it functions through using a distributed mesh network for non-essential public files. Uh, can you explain like I'm five? That's a fancy way of saying all ROMs connect to all other ROMs within range, and they share any files amongst themselves that the user hasn't flagged as private. It's handy in dense population areas like Neo SF, since it can bypass regular telecom nodes to access the internet. Out in the sticks, though, you're stuck connecting to regular old pipes. Yuck. What was Hayden working on? Mostly that little guy you got there. I'm sure he had his fingers in a lot of pies, but Turing is all I knew about. Do you know why he may have gone missing? I'm not real sure. He was super hush-hush about his work on Turing, and that might have made Parallax upset. They're working on their own projects, and I'm certain Hayden had some kind of intellectual property clause written into his contract with them. That would just mean he would get fired, maybe even sued, but I can't, I can't imagine they would disappear him. They ain't the CIA or anything. Okay, so how do we find Hayden? I'm not really sure, hun. But I guess it might help if we knew why he went missing in the first place. I'll stay here and ask around a bit. But people know me, and they sure ain't gonna talk to a newbie like yourself. Why don't you hop back over to Hayden's place and grab the data cache out of his computer for me? We can go over his research notes and see if we can't find a reason for his being vanished. Alright, I'll come back when I have the data cache. Good luck. Turing, you keep her out of trouble. Ooh, there's arcade machines. I wonder if I can play them. Alright, so I want the data cache from Hayden's computer. Um, I want to talk to Jess again to see if she's maybe warmed up to my existence now that I've talked to Tomcat? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> probably not. She probably still hates me. I mean, look, she has cat ears and I'm looking for Tomcat. Come on, that's a reasonable assumption. Uh. So I guess we're gonna look for the data cache and see if I can mess around with these arcade machines. In the next episode. Cliffhanger, kind of. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And I'll be back soon.